sometimes wide and peaceful, sometimes narrow and wild. The Nile is a living artery which cuts through half of the African continent. Here it ends a wild run through the high plateau of Central Africa. It must travel 6,000 kilometers before running into the Mediterranean. The Nile often changes names during the course of its voyage. Here in Uganda, it is called Nile Victoria for a brief stretch. Winding tranquilly for several dozen kilometers, it encounters a narrow bottleneck, a necessary point of passage, Murchison Falls. Nile's entire mass of water must be engulfed through a gorge barely seven meters wide. Several kilometers down the way, it regains its ease and peaceful rhythm. Beware of still water, goes the proverb. Here, one is wary of what is lying still in these waters. Seldom showing itself, it is feared and respected by all of its neighbors. The Africans call it Master of the River. Crocodilus niloticus, its Latin name, is the largest of its species, measuring three to five meters in length. The ancestors of the Saurians were already present during the golden era of the reptiles and outlived the dinosaurs. 200 million years of evolution with little change. The crocodiles have inherited most of their ancestral characteristics, particularly their invincible bony plating. In Africa, Rivers are always sources of conflict. Here the tension began about three weeks ago when the females laid their eggs on the banks. There are about 60 days of incubation left. For the females, this means 60 more days of fasting as they spend their time surveying the nest. In any case, tensions and conflicts do not prevent them from living a long life. With scales blackened with time, this female is over 100 years old. This grand dame shares the bank with a young lass, a 30-year-old female. Contrary to appearances, females do not incubate their eggs. The eggs lay at rest in the cool depths of a hole dug for the purpose, where the temperature stays between 30 and 35 degrees Celsius. Once this task is completed, all that is left to do is wait. waiting, but always with an eye open. The female must keep watch on her eggs, never slackening her vigilance. It is the only way to protect them from audacious and sly predators. Here is the female crocodile's worst enemy, the Nile monitor an attentive and efficient predator who swallows up eggs scrupulously and arbitrarily. This tiny Nile monitor of one and a half meters, distant cousin of the Komodo dragon, is in the habit of waiting for dawn to break into action. This one has just finished its morning sunbathing a gulp of water, and it will be ready to go hunting. The Nile monitor is patient. It is hot outside, and it knows that the moment will come when the females will slacken their guard when they return to the water for refreshment.
First, a quick scan of the territory to define the perimeters of the search. The Nile monitor is a fine bloodhound with a sensitive nose. During the egg laying, the female crocodiles deposited odoriferous secretions in the nest so they could easily find the nest again after a refreshing swim. This odor provides a precious clue for the Nile monitor. But beware of informants. These armed lapwings have a contract with the masters of the river. In exchange for the right to nest on the banks and the protection of the crocodiles, they keep watch on the eggs and sound cries of alarm upon the arrival of an intruder. The kingfishers take their role of lookout so seriously that they take turns nose diving at the Nile monitor to peck him with their beaks. These repeated aggressions are surely exasperating, but not dissuasive enough. The Nile monitor continues its search. Only the arrival of a crocodile could make this enemy scatter. Eyes and nostrils protruding on the surface of the water, a low profile. Discretion, the other strong point of the crocodile. No one ever sees it approaching. Two pairs of nostrils are better than one when it comes to finding eggs on such a vast beach. Continuing their search, the two Nile monitors gather and devour all the carcasses they find along the way, not suspecting a thing. One of the intruders had a little fright. This does not stop it from hastening to the site. The surprise was enormous for the second intruder. In three strides, the female crocodile hoisted her 900 kilograms up onto the bank. But the Nile monitor is a quick creature. Sure of its own agility, it refuses to scatter. Once it is on the scent of eggs, the Nile monitor is not one to renounce. The eggs are quite close by, buried somewhere, but where? A few old shells are strewn about, making it all the more exciting. The centenarian female has returned to her watch. She does not make the least effort to chase away this insolent creature, knowing that her presence alone is enough to dissuade it. The Nile monitor decides to be reasonable. It will not find any crocodile eggs today. Might as well return to the forest and steal eggs from bird nests. It is generally believed that crocodiles adore laying lazily in the sun. In fact, as with all cold-blooded animals, they need an external heat source to raise their body temperature, which must be maintained at 26 degrees Celsius. This requires constantly alternating between sunbathing and refreshing swims. When the heat becomes too intense and nobody feels like moving, all they need do is open their mouths to cool off. The exposure of mucous membranes to the sun 
facilitates the cooling process through evaporation. The spur-winged plover also have an agreement with the crocodiles. As they groom and bathe, they survey the surroundings. It's quite an art being a reptile. Because of their thermoregulation system, they must regularly alternate between heat from the sun and cool of the water. Each must find the proper dose. This rolling thunder announces a crucial event for all of the inhabitants of the river and its banks, the rainy season. It is the beginning of April and torrents of water will fall for several weeks in this equatorial region of Africa. The Nile widens at a phenomenal rate. One morning, everything subsides. The water stops as quickly as it came, leaving fish stranded in tiny ponds of water. Fishing has never been this easy for the tufted heron and the Egyptian geese. The kingfisher is also delightfully surprised. Even those enormous fish, the perch of the Nile, were caught by the surprise of the sudden subsidence. This particular one, stranded on a sandbar, arouses much greed, especially among the famished female crocodiles still waiting for their eggs to hatch. They are tempted to swim a few strokes in search of this carcass. But is it wise to desert the nest for such small gain? In any case, Hunger is making them nervous. The tension rises. Hierarchy is an essential part of crocodile social life, and it exists as much among the males as among the females. In order to avoid mortal combat, they settle conflict using body language with postures of submission and intimidation. In this way, the young female needs only lift her head slightly to express her resignation, giving priority to her senior. The crocodiles of the Nile are very fond of the perch, which can weigh up to 60 kilograms. They represent 80% of their food, but they are capable of capturing and eating just about anything from a frog to an antelope or even a buffalo. Only the hippopotamus escapes their powerful fangs.
The other female refuses to be left behind. She too has just spotted a dead fish. One fish, even two or three, seems a bit meager for such a mastodon. But the digestive system of the crocodile allows it to assimilate 60% of the energy contained in its nutriments. Consuming a minimum of energy to maintain the desired body temperature, its caloric reserves go a long way. The two females were not wise in deserting their nests. The Nile monitor has returned, only this time it has decided not to leave empty-handed. The Nile monitor is burning hot. Just a few more steps and a bit of digging will suffice to take the eggs from their nest. To the dismay of lookouts on the riverbank, it has achieved its goal and will shortly begin to feast. The Nile monitor is the only saurian to open its throat wide enough to swallow prey which seem much too large. It is estimated that the Nile monitors are responsible for 50% of the destruction of crocodile eggs. This is no longer mere arsony. It is a veritable carnage. The Nile monitor is capable of devouring an entire clutch of eggs in less than an hour. The lapwings can sing away, but there is no one to chase away the pillager. The female crocodiles are also in the middle of satiating their hunger. Unaware of the events taking place on the bank, they continue to plow the river in search of perch. The odor of the stranded carcass, sitting for several hours, has attracted the attention of another Nile monitor. Above all a scavenger, the Nile monitor can ingurgitate any edible finding. Even so, this one is a little big, and someone else is already eyeing it. Meanwhile, the nest pillager has engulfed almost all of the eggs. The indignation has reached its limit with the lapwings. Their cries of alert have finally been heard. The female returns towards her nest, abandoning all other concerns but at her own pace. On land, crocodiles have neither the speed nor the agility they are famous for in water. In urgent need, they can gallop at 20 kilometers per hour, but they easily lose their balance and resort to a means of locomotion better adapted to their morphology. 
The young female, alerted by the cries of the lapwings, is unable to arrive any faster to the site in order to save her clutch of eggs. Luckily, the crocodiles of the Nile are particularly prolific. A female can produce between 60 and 80 eggs per year. The perpetuation of the species is assured, even if only one of the thousands of eggs she lays in her life hatches. In other words, as scandalous as it seems, the pillaging of the Nile monitor is not a real threat to the species. Brawny intervention arrives too late. The young female will not have one single baby this year. Surely the female has not examined her nest very closely. Believing that there are a few eggs left, she begins to camouflage them in case of the return of the Nile monitor. The Nile monitor is so satiated that it is unable to swallow the last crocodile embryo. having spent the entire night grazing on the banks, return to the river just before dawn. Sun is the only thing they fear. The cohabitation of hippopotami and crocodiles goes rather smoothly, provided that each respect the rules of peaceful coexistence. When conflict arises, the crocodiles use their powerful jaws to instill fear into the hippopotami, who, in turn, count on their stoutness and corpulence to impress the crocodiles. It never goes any further. Sunrise is always awaited impatiently by the fishing eagle. As soon as the sun begins to shine on the surface of the water, it begins to lie in wait. The centenarian female has just heard the signal of her impending liberation, a call, the cry of the first babies to have reached maturity still inside their shells, buried 20 to 30 centimeters underneath the sand. She will have to dig, uncover the nest, so that the young can hatch. 